In this video, you are going to learn how to set up real-time pitch correction for live vocal performance. No one sings perfectly on pitch, but thanks to the power of technology, you can get a little help from software like Waves Realtune or Antares Autotune. In this video, I'm gonna cover the advantages of using vocal tuning in worship, and I'll include before and after examples from our worship gatherings so you can hear the difference. Next, I'm gonna show you all the gear and software that you're gonna need for this setup. It's not as expensive or complicated as you think. And finally, I'll walk you through how to route audio from your mixing console to your tuning software and then back to your mixing console. In a few minutes, you'll know exactly how to set up live vocal tuning at your church. Coming up. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. Do you use live vocal tuning in worship? Let us know your setup by leaving a comment below. Also, I'm gonna mention a lot of gear and software in this video, so make sure you download our worship ministry toolkit linked below so you can have links and you can find everything that I mention as well as uh, all of our other recommended gear for worship. Live vocal tuning is a very common practice in large churches, and you guys know me. This sort of stuff intrigues me, and I love trying to find ways for smaller churches like my my own uh, to implement this pro level strategy even on a smaller budget. I want to give the caveat that vocal tuning should only be viewed as a way to refine and perfect the sound of your vocals. Unless, of course, you're a trap style worship leader and you can go ahead and set the retune speed to zero and sing whatever pitch you want. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. But for the rest of us, you really need to make sure your vocalists are already competent enough to sing in tune most of the time. Pitch correction is most effective and sounds the most natural when you already have solid vocalists. Now I want you to hear some examples of vocals. First, you're gonna hear them without any tuning and I'm gonna play back a spot where it's kind of obvious we get off pitch. And then after, I'll play back the same part of that song with the tuning engaged. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three and one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. So you could probably hear how it really helped lock the vocal pitches into place without sounding artificial or sounding like we even applied any tuning at all. And that's exactly what we are aiming for. So now I'm gonna break down for you all of the gear and software you're gonna need for this setup. And surprisingly, it's not nearly as expensive or complicated as you might think. First, you'll need a digital mixing console comparable to the X32 or the M32. Uh, we use the M32R at our church plant, and this is what you see here. And one of the best parts about modern day mixing consoles is they're basically audio interfaces, meaning you can plug them into a computer, like this one right here, via USB or digital audio networking uh, via Dante, and you can get 32 channels of inputs and outputs to and from your computer. This allows you to send audio to your computer, process that audio using tuning plugins, and then send that audio back to your sound console. 
The next piece of gear I recommend, but it's not completely necessary, is the Dante expansion card for your sound console. Dante is a digital audio networking protocol that makes it much easier to send audio to and from your sound console and other Dante enabled devices such as your computer. You don't absolutely need Dante to make this connection, uh, but that's the setup that we use here at our church. You could use the sound card that comes standard with the X32 and send audio to and from your computer via USB. But in our setup, the one I'm gonna walk you through right here, I'm gonna show you how you can set it up with Dante, but pretty much all the same principles apply in terms of routing. Moving forward with Dante, make sure your computer and the sound console are on the same Dante network by plugging plugging in their ethernet cables into a common switch. So for the laptop we're using for this setup, we're using my older 2012 MacBook Pro with a retina display. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, has a quad core processor. It's an older laptop, but it performs great. It records 32 channels of audio into Pro Tools every Sunday. Uh, and for the purposes of this video, we also use it to run our tuning plugins for three vocals inside of Ableton Live. So on this computer, we've installed the Dante Virtual Sound Card app, which allows us to route audio uh, to and from the Dante network into software like Ableton Live or Pro Tools. It's like having an interface with up to 64 channels of ins and outs, uh, but we only use 32 channels on any given Sunday. Next, as I already mentioned, we run Ableton Live on this laptop solely for the purpose of tuning vocals. This has nothing to do with running tracks. So here's a brief overview of all this signal flow. We send the raw signals for our three vocalists from the sound console over Dante into Ableton where they get tuned and then they get sent back to the Dante network and back into the sound console. So what we hear playing through our main PA system is tuned vocals. There are two popular plugins for this type of scenario. There's Waves Tune created by Waves and there's also Auto Tune, which is more popular, created by Antares. The one I recommend is the Waves Tune. It's a fraction of the price of the Auto Tune plugin and in my opinion, it sounds just as good. Good. So that's all of the gear and software you will need to make this happen. So I thought the easiest way for me to show you how to get this set up is just to set this up for one vocal microphone that I have plugged in to our mixing console. On the mixing console, kind of the first step, and this is a strategic move that we've taken, uh, especially as we're still kind of trying out this tuning and we wanna make sure we have some uh, safety nets in place if, in case if something goes wrong. So we actually have two channels on the mixing console reserved for each of the vocals that need tuning. There's gonna be channel number one, which the input for that channel is gonna be the preamp on our stage box, or in this case, the preamp uh, in the back of this mixing console. That's where the raw signal is coming in. Uh, we even you know, process the vocals uh, to our liking. We also use that channel with the raw audio for in-ear monitoring, because as a vocalist, you don't wanna be monitoring back your tuned voice because you're gonna hear dissonance once in a while, especially uh, when you're off key, it's really not, not good to monitor your tuned vocals. So then what we did is we created a second channel for my vocal channel, and this is gonna be the actual tuned channel. That's where the tuned audio is gonna be coming back into the board back from the Dante network, back from Ableton Live in our tuning plugin. And what this does for us is, number one, uh, it allows us to really just have a safety net so that if something went wrong, if this computer crashed or Ableton crashed, uh, you know, that's gonna affect that, that signal flow and it would not sound great. And we wanna make sure we have a quick backup solution uh, so that our mixing uh, engineer can easily just turn the volume up uh, on the original channel and then just you know mute the one that's tuned. So it's very easy to, um, to fix it if there's ever a train wreck. So that's why we have two channels. I know with some mixing console configurations, you may be able to you know simply uh, tap in like as an insert onto a channel um, and then send that audio to your external 
tuning plugin and send it back into that channel within its signal processing chain, and you only need one channel. I know a lot of people do it that way. This is the way we chose to do it, especially because it has a good safety net uh, for noobs like me who don't know what they're doing. So at the end of the day, when this is set up properly, you're gonna see the ch channel number one here, which is the raw channel. It's gonna be turned all the way down, and then channel number two um, is gonna be turned up to unity here, um, and that's what the congregation is gonna be hearing through the main PA speakers. If I wanted to, I could even disable um, the main bus outputs on channel number one just to make sure that it never also gets added. Um, really depends on your uh, sound person and how they want to navigate that. So now let me actually walk you through the steps of this signal chain so you can see what's happening and, and where this audio is going. So the first step, my voice sings into this microphone, goes through the XLR cable, and it's going into the local XLR inputs on the back of this mixing console. So when I go to the routing tab on this mixing console, these are the input routings, right? Usually we're using the AES-50 stage box, so this is usually down here on AES-50A1 through 8, but in this scenario, for this demonstration, I'm using local inputs one through eight. Um, so then when I'm actually at this channel here and I go to the config tab, you can see how the source is line one. So that's how the audio is getting in to this channel right now. The next step though is to take that raw audio and send it to the Dante network, into the Dante sound card, into Ableton Live. Sounds confusing, but it can be done in a few simple steps. So go to the routing section, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to card out and select the input channels that you're taking signals in for your sound console or digital snake that you wanna be sent to your card outputs for your Dante network. So I have card outputs one through eight are assigned to local one through eight. So that means the signal goes from this mic into channel one, which is the local plugin on the back of this sound console. That's also gonna feed that same signal to the Dante network. Next, I'm gonna move over to my laptop running the Dante controller app. And I just wanna double check that all the routing is good to go here. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my Dante transmitter. I have the Midas, um, and then I want the receiver to be uh, the Pro Tools uh, MacBook Pro here. And I just have everything patched one-to-one -one, very simple setup. This isn't exactly how we do it at our church on Sunday, but just for this demonstration, you know, the key is making sure that this this is happening right here. So I have card output one, which is um, what we're gonna be pulling from this raw vocal mic here on the board. This is mapped to sound, sound card input one on the Pro Tools computer. So that connection is made and ready to go. Uh, I wanna also just obviously double check the sound card is up and running. I'm just using 16 channels right now. Um, and if the sound card wasn't running, you wouldn't be able to see that there. Um, so that is set to go with the Dante networking. And then in Ableton Live, um, you can see I have the plugin running already, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to preferences. I'll show you these settings. You'll see that my audio input device and output device is set to Dante Virtual Sound Card. Uh, and then I'll make sure, you know, this is configured properly. I'll activate however many inputs I need. In this case, I just have one and two activated. Um, and then I'll also make sure that we have however many outputs we need activated so we can send a single back over the Dante network. So uh, we have one and two and three and four. Um, we don't even need three and four right now. So go ahead and shut that off. I'll press OK. And now, we're ready to start building out the Ableton Live project. So what I did is I created three audio tracks and the purpose of these tracks, all, all it's doing is giving us a place to put the, the Waves Tune or the Auto-Tune plugin to process this audio and immediately send it back to the mixing console. So th the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the inputs and outputs for the track selected. So you'll want external in, and then you'll see I have one selected, and this metering right here uh, is coming from the sound console, the Dante network. And then for the external out, I wanna select one as well, so it's gonna send a signal back to the Dante virtual sound card over the network 
into the mixing console and then back into our channel here on the soundboard. So that's how that routing is configured and these numbers will, they'll look different depending on how you set up routing, but I'm hoping by now you're getting the overall big principles of of how all these card output numbers and these inputs and the Dante patching and all this stuff works. And if you were using a regular sound card, like the, the one that comes with the X32 or the PreSonus uh, sound consoles, it, it would be a very similar setup. You can pretty much just skip all of the Dante stuff that I showed you. You'll just wanna make sure that you know where your channel's being routed to, to your sound card inputs, and then how to get it back to the proper output from Ableton uh, back into the mixing console. It makes total sense, right? So that's the most important thing in this setup, making sure your audio routing is set up properly. Then finally, you get to the fun part where you actually get to apply the plugin. So like I said, you can use Wavestune, you can use Autotune. I recommend starting with Wavestune. Uh, it's very affordable in its price point. Um, and, and setting that up is very simple, only takes a couple minutes. And then once it is set up, when you're in Ableton, you go to the plugins tab and you'll see it show up here in your browser. All you have to do is drag it down here um, to the area where you can apply some plugins to your track and it'll be good to go. So you have to go through each track that you're doing and uh, drag this plugin down here to apply it. So let's open up this plugin and see how it works. So I'm gonna hit the little wrench right there and you can see I actually already have it engaged. Um, and you're actually hearing, uh, let's switch to the mixer audio right now for this mic. Right now you're hearing my voice going through this plugin and being tuned. And as I talk, you probably can't really hear it being applied at all. Um, and which is great. You don't want to hear it applied at all. Um, but you can start messing with the settings. You can you can de you can decrease the speed of the tuning. So it's it's a really fast tuning, and it kind of gives you that auto tune uh, like sound. Or again, you know, decreasing the speed of the note transition. Um, that's when things are gonna interesting. Things are gonna start to happen. But you'll find the default settings are around 14 milliseconds here, 15 milliseconds, and then like 120 milliseconds for a note transition. And I found that's pretty natural. You can adjust the percentage of correction that's applied. I just had it on 100 and it sounds fine, it sounds natural. Uh, down here you can select the vocal type. So for me, I'd put tenor, um, and it kind of helps narrow in the range of, of where I'm gonna be singing. You can see I'm speaking down here kind of at a lower range, but uh, when I sing, oh, the overwhelming, it'll start uh, playing notes up here. So it's cool. It visualizes the notes that they're actually singing. And then down here, uh, you know, you can select what key the person is singing in. And th this is great. If your sound tech has the time to make these changes um, for, for the keys that are being sung, you can really narrow in like and, and make sure that if it tunes, it's only going to tune to the right key. But We've had a lot of good experience so far just keeping all of our tuning plugins in chromatic mode. And so long as you have some solid vocalists, um, they'll be it'll be tuning to the right note. Maybe like one out of a hundred times, um, you'll you'll have those awkward notes where it does tune to the wrong one because your vocalist was that off key. But for the most part, chromatic warp mode has been working fine. So now that we have signal coming into Ableton, we have the plugin up and running. Let's make sure though it is getting back to the mixing console properly, and I'll show you those settings. So I'll go back to Dante. Now my transmitter is my Pro Tools computer, and the receiver is the mixing console. Again, I just mapped it one to one, 16 channels, really simple setup. Um, and then when I go back to the routing on my sound console, I'll go to the main routing page here, and then you'll see inputs 25 to 32, I assigned to card one through eight. So that means it's gonna take the digital card inputs one through eight and start piping them uh, into this board on inputs 25 through 32. Watch how this works. So I'm gonna go back to home, and then I'm gonna go back to uh, my channel here. This is gonna be my tune channel. The second one, I'll go to config. And you know, here's all of our inputs, right? So we have inputs one through 32, and you'll see when I get down to inputs 25 through 32, you'll see the sources are card one through eight. So all I did is I selected card one, and that's why you're seeing the tuned vocal come into this second channel. So first, I'm going to demo for you what my vocals sound like raw, no tuning at all. Praise the
now I'm going to turn off the and I'm going to turn up the tuned channel and I have it in chromatic mode, tenor, the tuning speed and the note transition speed. It should sound pretty natural, but hopefully you'll hear it give my voice a little bit of help. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. So I'm not expecting you to hear a drastic difference there. I can mostly sing on pitch just fine, but we've really found that this plugin is so powerful in just kind of locking in the voices, bringing them from 98% to 100% in tune, especially when we're singing lots of harmonies or maybe when I'm trying to sing those really high notes, it kind of gives me that extra nudge um, to, to get it up there and just lock it in tune. So that wraps up this in-depth guide on how to set up real-time vocal tuning at your church for your worship services, or maybe you're not a worship leader, but this could actually help you out no matter what type of live performance venue you are singing in. I want to remind you to check out the worship ministry toolkit linked below this video where I have my complete list of all the gear and software that you see here so you know exactly where to find these tools. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hit that like button if you found it valuable and share it with your other friends in ministry. You can check out some related videos right on over here and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.